Do you have a one-shot color camera? Do you use one of these dual narrowband filters? Do you want to get better results on narrowband targets? Then this video was made for you. I am going to introduce you to a new, innovative technique that will allow you to make the most out of your equipment. So let's So before we try this new technique in PixInsight, let's first talk about the theory behind it. As you'll see, the concept is relatively simple, but there is a little bit of math involved. Don't worry, we're going to keep it as simple as possible. So let's look at the spectral sensitivity graph of my own astronomy camera, which is the ZW ASI 533MC Pro. I got this graph from the product page on the OPT website, which is where I purchased it from. You may need to ask the manufacturer of your camera or look at the data sheet for the sensor that is included in your camera in order to get a similar graph for your own model. On this graph, I superimposed the two spectral lines that matter the most to us, which are O3 at around 500 nanometers and H alpha at around 650 nanometers. A dual narrowband filter like the Optolong at Extreme, which is what I use, will only let these two wavelengths through and will block everything else. Using this graph, we can estimate for a given pixel the light intensity in the blue, green, and red channels as a function of the light intensity in the O3 and H alpha wavelengths. And that is represented by the equations at the, at the bottom of the slide. These are really just approximate values from reading the graph, and the parameters will need to be fine-tuned later in the process once we've had a chance to apply it to a real image. I'll show you how to do that. Now, the goal is to basically reverse these equations. What we really want is the light intensity at the O3 and H alpha wavelengths as a function of the light intensity in the blue, green, and red channels, since that is all we get from a one-shot color camera. So let me show you how to do this next. Thankfully, this is pretty straightforward, and we get these two equations. Again, at this point, the parameters are just an estimation for the ZW ASI 533MC Pro, but they should be already in the right neighborhood for us to get started. If this works, we should be able to get some clean O3 and H alpha data out of our one-shot color camera, and that will allow us to apply different processes to these two images in order to obtain the best possible result in the end. Okay, now is the time to test this out in PixInsight on a real image and see what we get. All right, so we're in PixInsight now. Let's take a look at this integrated image of the Crescent Nebula, which I captured right here from my light polluted backyard in San Jose, California, uh, back in June 2021, using my five inch refractor at F7, a ZW ASI 533MC Pro one-shot color camera, and an Optolong at Extreme dual narrowband filter. I think it's pretty amazing what's possible to do nowadays, even in light polluted conditions, using these modern CMOS cameras and uh, these uh, modern narrowband filters. Okay, so the first step would be to crop this image in order to remove the integration artifacts and maybe in some cases to fix the framing. And then we would also apply DBE or dynamic background extraction. So this is the result of these two operations. The next step is to extract the red, green, and blue channels out of this RGB color image. And for this, we're going to use the channel extraction process in PixInsight. It's configured to be in RGB color space, and we are naming the target images RGNB. This is pretty important for the pixel math equations we're going to be running after that. Okay, so here's the results. 
Obviously, they're all black because we're still in linear mode. We can apply a screen transfer function to see what we're looking at. Let's minimize these images. We don't really need them now. And let's put them on the side. OK, so now we're ready to apply our pixel math equations. So here is a pre-configured pixel math process instance, which uses the equation that we saw in the previous slide. Uh, this is also configured to create a new image, which will be named O3, and it will be in grayscale color space. You may notice here that I'm referring to the images that we just generated and that are named RG and B. Okay, let's run this. It takes only a couple of seconds. And while we're at it, we might as well also generate H alpha, which refers to the red channel and the O3 image that we just generated. Okay, so this is what we get. Let's apply a screen transfer function to both of these images so we see what we're looking at. And here's the result. So overall, this looks very good. And the reason that I think it looks good is because the background in the O3 image is relatively uniform. You see, on this kind of target, you would not expect to see much O3 signal outside of the center of the nebula. There is a lot of uh, H alpha signal around the nebula because that part of the night sky is full of hydrogen clouds but you don't expect to see a lot of O3 signal in the background. And when I first ran uh, my equations um, with um, other values for the parameters, I was able to actually see the H alpha, uh, the, the hydrogen clouds in the O3 image. And when you see that, it means that the parameters are not uh, tuned. So you're going to have to go through a trial and error process for your specific camera and you only really need to do it once, and then you can apply the same equations for all of your future narrowband images. But this is a process that is worth doing or going through once. Just make sure that the background is as uniform as possible, and also that you don't have any artifacts showing up in your nebula. And then once you have uh, these two images, you can continue with the next step of the process, which I'm going to cover next. All right, so very quickly, let me run you through the process that I used to create the final image. So the next step in the process was to run a deconvolution. And then I ran a linear denoise process using the easy processing suite. And then I delinearized the images also using the easy processing suite. And these are the images that I got. Then the next step um, was to use Starnet to get a starless version of the O3 and H alpha uh, images. And then I combined these two images using pixel math to create this RGB image. Then I applied uh, some curve transformation and I also denoised the background and blurred it slightly to make the nebula pop a little bit more and this is what I got. In parallel I also captured some RGB uh, image of the stars and I combined that with the nebula to create the final version. So here's very quickly the process that I went through to create this image. As you can see, it's not super difficult, um, but the key was to be able to extract a clean O3 and HA signal out of the one-shot color camera that I use. Uh, I think that was fundamental in order to uh, create this final image. So there you have it. Um, I hope you find it useful. I hope that you can use this new technique on your own narrowband images. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And until next time, thank you for watching.